in an Edweek opinion piece entitled Student Laziness is a Myth, Here's Why, the principal of an international school posits a Pascal's wager matrix to argue against teachers believing in the laziness of their students. It predictably garnered hot replies on Facebook from teachers offended by the implication that they were being criticized. My psychological perspective might offer a more substantive critique. The author premises his argument on the idea that our beliefs drive our behavior. That is true only in a very limited sense. The psychologist Jonathan Haidt has said that our conscious mind is like a rider on the element of our non-conscious mind. While the rider can develop some influence over long-term patterns, there is little that the rider can do in the moment to counteract the elephant's decisions. While it is true that you can fail to act based on a non-belief in the efficacy of a particular action, it is not true that holding a belief in an action's efficacy will lead you to act in accordance with that belief consistently. There are a number of ways that beliefs are regularly overridden on their way from the conscious intention of the rider to becoming engaged action by the elephant. For instance, if you have habitual patterns of behavior that contradict your belief, the odds of your acting consistent with the belief of your rider and inconsistently with the habit of the elephant is low. Habits are notoriously hard to kick, no matter what beliefs you entertain. Another known effect that diminishes the probability of acting on a belief is how other people's expressed opinions affect our responses. There is a famous experiment by Solomon Ash that was recreated by the National Geographic show Brain Games, which shows that even in the trivial situation of judging the length of three lines against a clear standard placed adjacent to the other options, the majority of people can be inexplicably influenced to profess a demonstrably absurd belief, not the truth. Further research using brain scans shows that some people are so attuned to fitting in with the group that they genuinely believe the absurdity, not the truth. We have the intuition that our senses deliver a roughly accurate conception of reality to our minds, and that we generate true beliefs according to what our senses indicate. But that is not the case. Our beliefs are generated in other ways that are hard to fathom, such as taking the collective wisdom of our group to be more accurate than our own senses, which is what appears to be the case for some people in Ash's line-judging experiment. What the science of motivation says about laziness is that while the behaviors that are labeled lazy certainly exist, the causes of those behaviors are not any stable characteristics within the person who's being labeled that way. Despite the meaning of the word indicating a character trait that is supposed to be imbued in the person, the truth is that behavior we would label as lazy are byproducts of the situation. This is consistent with decades of well-replicated, highly respected research from many different theoretical and pragmatic perspectives that have proven time and again that what we variously call personality, disposition, and or character traits are not nearly as powerful as our intuitions would have us believe. The cause of laziness is how prior experiences of the thwarting of their psychological needs in that type of situation have shaped the students or teachers to expect more of the same. If a person expects a negative payoff, then it is irrational for them to make any more than an absolutely minimal investment of psychic and attentional energies in what a student or teacher reasonably expects to be a toxic situation. We do not have to dissect the laziness matrix presented in the Edweek piece. We can reject the stated fundamental premise on which it is based because of psychological implausibility. While non-belief prevents behavior, contrary to the author's assertion, beliefs do not drive behavior. Even if his argument about belief could be the mechanism of conversion to his point of view, he fails to ground his understanding of laziness in a scientifically validated perspective. 
Unfortunately for him, he drew on intuitive notions about the roles of belief and character traits in human behavior that have been repudiated by the science of psychology. So he has built his castle in the sky. The implications of this are important. Students are not lazy. They are often embedded in schools that make them lazy. Same is true for teachers. It is the school institution that is causing the problem, not the people in that problematic situation. This is hard to grasp because we want to identify a singular cause for what we see. We want to blame someone for being inadequate. When I attribute the cause to the situation, not the actors in it, it is almost impossible to lay blame on any specific person. Think about it as if you are an atom who is hot and bothered by the formation of a whirlpool. The disruption that you experience when a whirlpool forms is getting your worst atomic impulses worked up towards going into Karen mode on the water molecules that keep making that damn swirling motion. Letting go of the imagined emotions for a moment. Consider that when a whirlpool forms in a kitchen sink after the dishes are done or in the bathtub after the bathing is done, the pattern that arises is not caused by any particular water molecule that happens to have passed through it, nor any of the metal or porcelain molecules that make up the sink or tub. If you are a Karen Mode atom trying to place the blame for the whirlpool on any other atom, you are barking up the wrong causal tree. The whirlpool arises as a consequence of all those water, metal, or porcelain molecules being in a particular situation created by the relationship between the sink and the body of water that it contains. In schools, the teachers and students are the atoms that make up an institution. They're not to blame for the large scale patterns. Much of their behavior is ultimately a byproduct of the relationships that were created by the school institution under the influence of the society in which it is embedded. Teachers and students are far more complex than atoms, so it is not accurate to say they have no responsibility. But we have intuitions about how influential our personality, disposition, and or character traits are in causing behavior. Those aspects of our minds have some influence, but not nearly as much as we usually suppose. Teachers and students are responsible for their small-scale interpersonal behavior, but they are not responsible for the large-scale patterns of behavior. When we have solid evidence that boredom, anxiety, depression, disengagement, and other negative states of mind that will lead to the behaviors that are typically labeled lazy are rampant in schools, we have to zoom out from the interpersonal dynamics between individual people and look for causes at the organizational and societal levels. In order to exert an influence on the situation of schooling in a way that is consistent with what psychologists know about how human minds actually work and with how organizations also work, I created the Deeper Learning Resolution. It lays out the role that human needs play in learning and how a school organization can initiate a process to ensure that everyone's needs are recognized and ultimately satisfied. Let's put an end to laziness in schools by using scientific insights from psychology, not just intuitive philosophical speculation. You can learn more about it at dladvocates.org and start a resolution campaign at your school. I will include links to the original piece in Edweek, my blog post about how psychology nullifies Pascal's wager, and other resources in the description on YouTube. Thanks for watching.